The family were completely beside themselves and it was like absolute devastation. They couldn't believe what had happened. Their son or daughter is suspected to have gone abroad and got involved in a conflict, which it's quite likely they won't come back from. It's hard for her to accept that her son has passed away, but uh, she's still adamant that he's going to walk to the door one day. You can just see the person's world falling apart. The hardest bit for me as a contact officer is the going in. It's a busy scene when you go into the house. You could have seven or eight police officers at the address. The family are quite often absolutely distraught. But something really drastic is happening in their life, something major. These are good families broken apart by the actions of one of their members having to deal with police officers searching through their homes. Families are all put together in a room. Usually sat down in the living room, that would be a typical thing. They have a lot of questions that they want answers to. How can we bring them back? That's the kind of things they'll ask us. And if we're saying the same to them. Can you get them back? Because of course they might phone you. Tell them to come back, that you're missing them. Talk some sense into them. One particular case, the son had gone to Syria, and the younger child, who was 18 months old, keeps on going to the bedroom, trying to find his elder brother. When he finds an empty bed, he comes back downstairs. He obviously can't understand what's going on, and I find that very, very uh, touching. Work will be done with the schools to see whether they had any concerns over the children. The social services will be informed. Children are very vulnerable. Often they're the ones that have found the note saying that their brother is gone. I think people in many situations don't give proper thought to how this is going to impact upon their family. However hard you try to not make it look like there's something going on, people, neighbours will be aware of what's going on. People do see, you know, people walking up and down the garden path, going out to the, a car and fetching a big bag of equipment. One of the cases that I've dealt with was a family where the husband had gone away and the wife was absolutely devastated. When she left her front door and walked down her road, people used to cross over. Neighbours that previously had spoken to her completely ignored her and she felt it was because of what had happened. It's incredibly difficult for a family who have had no contact with the press previously to have reporters descending on their door day and night. It's on the news, it's in the papers, it's in the community. They can't get away from it. They're stigmatised. They are the, the, the terrorists that live up the road, as it were. Being a contact officer is an emotional role. It's very difficult to explain to the mother. She'll never get to see her child's coffin because her son's been killed on a, a field in Syria. There's no closure because there's no body. The person can't go to that place. They can't speak to anybody, find out for definite. How, how did it happen? Did they suffer? Um, would they have known that this was happening? Did they speak about anything, particularly before they died? Was there any last message? How could you not be affected when people are going through grief? If there's someone that you know, maybe someone in your family, that might be looking to travel out to uh, a conflict zone such as Syria, speak to the police as soon as possible. The sooner the better. Do it before it's too late. <laughs>